a profitless boom. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to have a look at this article from ABC. It's discussing increasing construction costs, blaming it on the Ukraine war among other things. But the, the little takeaway in it that I thought was really interesting was just the builders not making a profit in this boom. Now you hear that happening all the time. You can just be so busy, flat out, not making any cash, not making any more money. I remember when I was a student working for an architect and his practice had grown from 10 to 30. He didn't make any money between in, in that, even growing that much bigger. He only started making more money once they reached above that level because just of all the additional costs and rigmarole associated with it. So let's let's check this one out. Builder warns costs of new homes will rise as the war in Ukraine sees tariff on timber imports. So let, let's have a look at this. Builder Sonny Fulton had a tough 18 months. Despite being in the middle of a building boom and working harder than ever before, his Rockhampton business is losing money. This is a profitless boom, he said. Yeah, I can see that happening. The cost of building a new home rose by 20% in 2021 due to material shortages, disrupted supply chains, and demand for skilled tradespeople. It is now said to be even more expensive due to a 35% tariff increase on imports from Russia and Belarus imposed by the federal government. Now, here's the thing. Tariffs are not taxes on the Russians. They're not taxes on the Belarusians. They're not taxes on these other countries. They are taxes on us. We have to pay for it. Okay? It's driving up the costs for us, for consumers. So because our politicians want to make a political statement, we have to pay more. So you've got to think about it. Is it worth it? Is it worth it, guys? You could prop up Australian businesses. It could mean we could be importing from other countries that are worse than these ones. This is the thing. Tariffs aren't a good, a good thing for the average consumer. It's just another one of the hidden taxes that we have to pay. Anyone who's pushing for tariffs to protect industry really want you to subsidize workers that can't compete with other countries overseas. That's what it is. You are paying for it. It's very hard. Sometimes you don't want to be in the industry anymore, he said. Oh, that, that's, yeah, he's getting close to being burned out maybe. And that's the problem. You, know, you could be busiest you ever can and not making any extra money. You go, stuff it. If this is going to be it for the next two to three years... I'll be saying goodbye to it because you just can't sustain it. Yeah, that, that's the real risk here for him is getting burned out. That's the biggest risk is pushing yourself to the edge and getting burned out. And then you could do, I mean, it's not worth damaging your health for putting up some spec homes for people or put up some houses for people. It's not worth it. So Russia, Russian imports to cost thousands more. Master builders... Deputy Chief Executive Paul Bidwell said, while timber from Russia and Belarus accounts for a small portion of Australia's overall lumber imports, it includes laminated beams used as structural support in new house construction. Ah, shit, I've got to get some. Maybe I'll just buy some more steel. He said it was another hit to an industry already under pressure because of supply chain delays and soaring building costs. That will add six to $11,000 to the cost of building a new home that just comes out of thin air, he said. There you go. There you go. So there, there, there's your 15 grand right there. For your, there's a big chunk of all of the government money thrown to stimulate the housing sector. It's all bullshit, guys. This is the problem. You wanna, we want to push for politicians that limit the government involvement in this type of stuff. Mr. Bidwell said the time it took to build a house had also doubled in the past year. It may have taken three or four months to build a new home, and now it's taking eight months, he said. It's getting worse. On top of all of the COVID-related supply chain issues and on top of the global boom in building, all these things just pile up. New homes costing $100,000 more to build. Shit. This this is why, everyone. This is why when when people are predicting a 50% property crash and all of this stuff, it's bullshit, guys, because you can... Disassemble a house then and you sell them the second-hand materials for more money. 
Mr. Fulton has had in, uh, Mr. Fulton increased tariffs on imported timber has added to the already soaring costs of running his building business. It's a big chunk for us that we have to wear. With the added cost of timber going through, it just never ends. He said he had just finished building a house that he initially quoted to cost 380 grand. Oh no, in mid 2020, it ended up costing 480 to build. He said given the contract was fixed price, he had to bear the extra cost. Now this is this is a problem. This is a problem because in big contracts back in the day, particularly government contracts, there would be provisions to allow for material inflation, for in, insane cost changes. There'd be provisions to allow for that. But now we've been in a period with no, pretty much no inflation where you, know, you can churn it over in a quarter. Uh, people absorb it or they, they price it in. But you can't price in a hundred grand increase. The banks won't give you another hundred grand increase. So who cops it? The builders and the subbies cop it and they fall over. And then people start getting unfinished houses. We're not making any money. We're actually losing money. But we're working harder for it," he said. "Yeah, that's that's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. You might as well go, you know, effort. I'm going fishing. He's living up in in Rocky. You know, just go drive drive to the to the water. You know, or go have a steak. Really good meat there. Go to the pub. Sit on the river." Mister Fulton said he's now only doing variation contracts. You just can't quote anything. If you quote a client more than a month out. You just don't know exactly what price hikes you're going to get, he said. We've scared off six bills because the way we set up that contract. Yeah, that's. but you've got to protect yourself. You've got to protect yourself, guys. The banks aren't approving these houses because they want fixed price contracts, so it makes it really hard. And this is the real issue here. The banks don't want any risk. You know, I had a phone call from the bank throw, you know, wanting to throw me money for my business, and I go, well, no. You know, give me give me a line of credit on my house, and then I'll use that to help finish my house a bit quicker as owner builder. And you go, oh no, no, we can't do that. We can't take the risk. Went, okay, you know, you know what the land value is, <laughs> even with a line of credit that I'd want, I'd still you'd you'd still be worth less than the land. But anyway, it's all banks are just about minimizing risk, guys. So anyone who tells you that banks are going to fall over and they're going to bail in all your money, that it's that's done for purpose. It's done with purpose to manipulate you. It's bullshit. It's not gonna. We're not like a little dodgy bank in the middle of the Mediterranean here. Come on. I mean, look, look at what happened. The last one, Pyramid Building Society, when it fell over, how, what did they do? They what? They put a charge on everyone in Victoria, and they eventually, you know, everyone got paid back. Took years, but they collected the money of all of you. So. The election call to reduce election calls to reduce import reliance. The Australian Forest Product Association said the timber shortage and supply chain disruptions highlighted a hidden issue the country had experienced for decades. For far too long, we've been relying on up to twenty five percent of timber imports to fill our needs. That's just a recipe for disaster, Chief Executive Ross Hampton said. Of course, there's an enormous amount of timber that's going to get bound up in this conflict in Iraq, Ukraine. And that's going to make it even harder to supply the homes we need. It's been an issue for a long time, but it's been rather hidden because the timber has been flowing into Australia. The shelves have been empty, so people haven't noticed. Well, it's also because it's cheaper. Okay, look behind me. See the bookshelves, guys. Those are all built out of plywood. We did our entire office out of structural ply. We just... We sanded it ourselves, and then we put a nice black stain on it. The desk I have here is built out of ply. The desk behind me, all our furniture, we've built out of ply. And we did that because if you dent it, you break it, you scratch it, you don't care. You need a hole, you drill right through it. All the other laminated products or these compact laminates, they can chip, they can look like crap, and it's not as easy to work with. I could chop up a desk and build a real simple little bookcase I need for storage. Now, we, would, we actually went out of our way for our little business when we were at Yoronga up the road to buy from a local, a local ply manufacturer. It was much, much, much more expensive than the Chinese imported stuff. And I know it's not going to be as, you know, there's going to be potential issues with regards to off-gassing, but you've got to weigh that up, everyone. 
You've got to weigh up the costs. It's because it's cheaper. That's why people are buying the imported product. Okay? That's it. You want cheaper housing? You need to allow the market to compete. And that's bringing stuff in. So, the AFPA has called on the major parties to commit to planting 1 billion production trees to meet Australia's future timber needs. All governments need to to have a plan to plant sufficient trees to supply Australia's timber needs. We've dropped the ball two or three decades ago, and it's time to be picked up. I mean, yeah, I mean, we need to have, there should be money. If if it's profitable, go for it. I mean, even give, I just keep thinking back about that farmer who cleared a bit of a fire break around his property, was fined by the government a shitload of money because he was following all the government's rules. It's, yeah. Coalition commits $219.5 million, I'm assuming, to forestry sector if re-elected. The coalition has committed almost $220 million to Australia's forestry industry in a bid to shore up domestic timber supplies and secure 73,000 jobs in the sector. The global demand for wood products is set to quadruple by 2050, so this investment in the jobs and future of the forestry industry is critical, the Scott Morrison said in a statement. I mean, timber is an awesome product, guys. It is literally captured sunlight. It is one of the best products you can use. It's really good. The funding includes $112.9 million to accelerate the adoption of new wood processing technologies and $100 million for a National Institute for Forest Product Innovation with up to five regional centers for excellence. Isn't that the CSIRO's job? Why are we setting up new things? Anyway, it also includes $6.6 million for the existing 11 regional forestry hubs to help local industry and businesses connect with cutting-edge research. In a statement, Labor's agricultural spokesperson, Julie Collins, said forestry was part of Labor's $15 billion National Reconstruction Fund. This will help add value to the sector and unlock new jobs and investments, she said. So... I mean, let's have a talk about this one, guys. So the pollies are throwing money at the timber sector and they're advocating for it. and use, they're, they're using this conflict and this rising costs to push for their political agenda. Okay, you, you can't blame the lobbying bodies for a, a professional organization or industry doing this. That's their job. That's their mandate. So good on them for actually representing their members. But you've got to understand... Tariffs cost us money. Are you happy to pay another 10 grand on your house because the government's imposed tariffs? That's the real question. Are you happy with that? If you are, fantastic. Good good on you. You you can be proud that you're paying extra on your house for no bloody reason. It's not going to make any difference. Let me know your opinion on that one, guys. This, This is the problem. You either have a free market and we compete or we start putting tariffs in and we all pay for it. Some people will be happy to pay for it, but maybe it's because they're in a fortunate enough position to be able to afford it. Well, you've got to think about the poorer people that can't, that just want to try and get a home and get into the market, but everything's so bloody expensive. Oh, well. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I find and put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can join on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. If you need architectural services, we're quite experienced with educational, resource, and commercial sector work. Particularly with steel, but steel's getting expensive too now, (laughs) particularly on my house. Take care, guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next episode of Heiser Says. 100 grand extra on a house. I I feel sorry for that guy. Shit. That that had just... That, yeah, yeah. Going to the missus, no, we can't do this anymore. This is bullshit. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.